right, we're live. Good morning, everybody. Uh, if you, anybody is tuned in already, I think we've got a few watchers say hello. Good morning. I've got my it's eight o'clock. I've got my coffee. It's full. I think we're gonna need a full cup of coffee today with everything that's going on. Um, before we get into having a little bit of chat about the inflation numbers, I, I have picked up a few articles to kind of share. We can have a chat about, but as always, these live streams are for you, for you. So if you have other questions or comments, by all means, shoot them out into the comment section. Be happy to answer them or, or try to answer them. And a lot of times the community can answer them for me, which is which is awesome as well. So uh, just a bit of housekeeping beforehand, uh, as I'm posting more videos on the channel and updates of the portfolio, if you missed yesterday's, I did do an update on the TFSA that's posted on my channel now. So you can go check that out afterwards if you want to. Uh, basically just an update of how the portfolio is doing. And, but what I wanted to talk about just quickly is just to make sure now I, 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 I hopefully everybody is smart enough not to, not to fall for any type of, any type of scammer in comments, but it seems lately, uh, the, my videos have been getting hammered with, with spam comments. So just be careful out there. Obviously, if you are reading the comments and someone is posting something that is sounds too good to be true, or they're trying to get you to, uh, direct message them off of, you know, off of YouTube into like big one is telegram or, or WhatsApp. And what's the other one? There's another one in there. Discord, I think is one that pops up. Uh, just ignore those. Uh, I do my best to, to delete those comments that come in, but they're sometimes just relentless and it, it, I don't always get to them right away. Obviously if I'm asleep, I don't get to these comments. So I do my best to block. If you do see something on, on, on the, in the comment section by, that, that looks dodgy, by all means go in there as well and flag it for spam it would really help me out as well. Uh, and hopefully we can kind of start to get rid of these people. Now, just on that note, uh, some of the ones that you'll see are sometimes or like a contest or something like that, or giveaway, uh, it hasn't happened for a bit, but just be aware that, I mean, I'm not going to be giving away, uh, whatever, anything on the channel, just to, you know, Bitcoin or anything like that. Uh, it's all a, uh, a scam, people trying to get your money. So uh, save your money, don't send it to people, don't send it to people on the internet that you don't know. Uh, and don't fall for their trading schemes. Um, that's all I had to say about that. So thanks everybody for tuning in to the live stream. We're, we're doing pretty good here. We're doing uh, live streams basically every day, eight between eight and nine. Good chance to have our, like I said, coffee in the morning before the day gets started. See how the markets are doing. And the big thing today is out of the States, the CPI. So let me just pull up some, uh, let me just pull up some uh, news on that one. And we can kind of discuss about that. So, um, and we've already got it here. Uh, before I even pull up the article from, uh, from Fathom, yeah. Um, not great, 8.2%, there you go, barely moved. Um, the market, I believe, was hoping from what I read on that. Now, let me just grab this article so I can pull it up. Uh, I think the, I think the, I think the market was predicting, let me just gonna hide your comment. Uh, I think it was predicting, so it came in 8.2, I think they were predicting 8.1. But then the core, they were predicting, what was it, six point? So what did the core come in? Came in higher as well. So anyways, yeah, it's higher. So that basically just solidifies that in the States, obviously, rate increases are going to be coming next month. They're obviously pricing it in the 75 basis points again, probably, and then probably another one. And I think we're kind of going to have that in Canada too, if you're watching, um, if you're watching from other places, we're in Canada on this on this live stream, but uh, we're going to have, I think, a, another a strong rate increase as well in Canada. Um, unfortunately, uh, highest inflation in what uh, the article highest in 40 years. So uh, I guess it's a time and I'll pull up. This was interesting, too, because as soon as the CPI numbers came out, literally as soon as it came out uh, i will pull this up as well because i can go over here and there we go so literally as soon as the um, as soon as the numbers came out this is interesting right like the s p you can see it drop gold as it goes in order here gold bitcoin 
and the euro as well um literally instantly so not a good day on the markets if we're if you're, if you're going to be checking your if you're going to be checking your um your portfolio today it's probably not a good day although kind of looking at things it seems like everything kind of reacts at the very beginning really quickly um but we might see a bit of a bit of a bit of a you know run up a little bit from all the sell-off uh, throughout the day i'm kind of looking at a couple of my holdings in, in the etf and uh, you know um a couple of them were hit like right away um, but everything's kind of like if you're if you hold like tell this is up a little bit today and my slate office read is up a little bit today of the two um and i think that's it yeah uh brookfree renewables was up a little bit a few minutes ago but obviously it's it's going to be this rocky weird time for for a while now so i don't know let me know your thoughts if you have any comments of that um how you think canada is going to fare when the numbers come out i think it's next fairly soon for canada i have to double check those data if anybody knows the date that canada releases their their numbers let me know i haven't looked that far ahead so i think we're in for some time to um i think the time is to save our money and not not go out spending but we've, we've, we talk about that a lot on on this channel i mean it's, everybody that kind of follows is definitely an investor or whether they're starting out or they're they've been investing for a long time um and that's that's exactly it like that's that's what you see right you think the the stock the market leads right so um how much lower can we go we're basically at 52 week lows for everything i think in summer even like back to their december 20 if i'm not mistaken december 2020 lows a lot of the a lot of the tech um google's at its 52 week low if i'm not mistaken i read this morning so if you're this is the thing i mean i guess you can look at look at it at the look at the bright side if you have the if you have the this is where it's it's difficult right because everything is more expensive you don't have as much disposable income um although i mean i don't necessarily consider investing as as, as a disposable income but it, it does relate to that in terms of the amounts and stuff that you can you can you can invest right because if your money is going other places you don't have the same amount to put into your investment um you should always have something going in there i think but that's um you know to, to average dollar cost average and break do regular regular investment but um yeah if you are able to purchase especially some of the stocks that you have convictions about and investments you have convictions about then it's probably not a bad time to be able to do that uh, the hard part is as we see no lot not a lot of people are, are are doing that just because everything else is so expensive right going up in price um especially if you're holding any debt um in terms of you know variable rate debt for sure that's definitely uh definitely uh harder because it costs more if you have a variable rate mortgage or if you have a variable rate line of credit or you know, even credit i think even credit cards have probably gone up a little bit in in interest rate prices now i, I can't speak for that because i don't have i have a, <laughs> I have a credit card but i don't hold a balance like i I definitely don't hold a balance on there. I don't. I don't. I don't use it to um, to buy things that I can't afford. So I'm thankfully that I don't have credit card debt because that can be brutal for people. If you're because and this is what happens, right? Everything else is everything else is more expensive, so you start to rely on these things, and they do catch up on you. Not to sound doom and gloom, but yeah, we've had we've had discussions before on the channel with inflation from a while back, and it hasn't it hasn't changed, right? It just keeps it just, it just keeps going up, up and up. Really more expensive, gas, housing, food, food's a big one. Food's a big one, but I think um, I think you can. There's ways that you can you can save money. You know, you have to just change your habits, and it's possible. It's not always fun, but. You have to change it. It's, it's not easy. It's, it sounds easy to just say not to do something, but it's harder than it harder than it sounds. But it's doable. You know, there's ways to there's ways to cut back on things that you don't necessarily need. And um, I was talking to a friend last week. Uh, we were talking about uh, subscriptions and stuff like that, right? Like everything's turned into like this. Everything's turned into like you don't actually own, almost own like you know remember you used to remember when you used to buy you needed a program for your computer like for example I use I use 
uh, Adobe for editing the videos on my channel when I when I edit them. Uh, Adobe Premiere. I have I have uh, uh, to subscribe now a monthly subscription to use the software. And you used to be able to just to buy it. I mean, software was sometimes never cheap, but even like Microsoft Word or you know Adobe Acrobat, I use a lot for work and you used to be able to own it. Oh, right, you'd buy it once. You wouldn't necessarily get the latest and greatest features all the time um, if you wanted to get it the up, but if you wanted to get an upgrade, you could you know, make make the decision to buy the upgrade or not and just do without. Where now a lot of everything is, everything is like, you're like renting everything, right? You're renting your, your software, you're renting your, you know, you have, you pay, I mean, obviously if you have cable, you're paying for cable, but like Netflix, it's like you're renting all these things. So the subscriptions, and we were talking about checking your, your monthly bill because everything goes on you, you put it you typically all on your credit card, right? So when you, you, you pull your credit card statement, you're like, all of a sudden you've got, you know, you've got Netflix, you've got Adobe subscription. You might have a Google subscription for uh, hard drive space or Gmail space, that kind of thing. And it might only be a few bucks, but all these little, like all these little things start to start to add up. Right. So where do you, and we were talking like, where do you cut back? Right. What can you, what can you get rid of that you don't, you don't necessarily use. So instead of just, you know, instead of having, you know, Amazon prime, Disney plus Netflix, whatever some of the other ones are cut off, cut off one of them. And, and all of a sudden you're saving yourself 20, $30. So, um, I think that's the time to do it. And actually talking to someone else, I heard they actually, when they went through their bills, they realized that they actually had a couple of overlapping subscriptions to things, uh, because their spot, their partner, his wife, they both had accounts for, uh, Netflix. And, that, and, and of course, having separate bills, they just didn't realize that they were both paying for it. They've been doing it for, I think, for, for over a year, probably. So it's worthwhile, I think, checking checking your expenses and seeing, you know, every day, balance, you know, do the check and balance when the month comes in and print it, right? We always get our, we always, everything's online, right? And the big thing is, we don't really get printed bills anymore, or at least I don't. And you see your balance, you're like, okay, well, I got to pay my balance. That's fine. But you don't actually have it in front of you to go, what's going like, and actually drilling it down. If it's, and if it's somebody's, if it's paper in front of you, you pay a bit more attention to things. So things to look at that. So other article here we've got, uh, this was also good. Uh, I, I found interesting as well. Now it's a little bit, it's a little bit faded in terms of time, uh, but, uh, record savings rates. This is now this, this is from back in 2021. So this, this, this survey might be a little bit dated now, just depending, you know, obviously with inflation and savings rates and, and that kind of stuff, but basically said, um, record savings rate fuel surge in Bitcoin ownership among Canadians. Uh, and as of in 2021, 13% of Canadians own uh, Bitcoin up from 5% the year before. Now, I don't know how many people in 20, cause obviously 2022 has been like the market has, 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 has come down, but I did find that interesting how, how that is definitely increasing. And also the, uh, if you go into here at the age group, but it does mention this kind of company, it did, does actually mention companies like Wellsimple making it easy to purchase Bitcoin. Um, and at the beginning with Wellsimple, you, you had no way to get your Bitcoin off of that exchange and into your own private, you know, private keys and everything else. But you can now, you can, I think you can withdraw, like basically, I think every cryptocurrency from uh, Wellsimple now, as far as I, as far as I know, it's, if it's not all of them, it's, it's the majority. Um, so if you're buying Bitcoin and you have, you might have Bitcoin sitting on your Wellsimple, it's been sitting there for a while. Um, you can now transfer it out just so you know. Um, so that I found that interesting. Um, and also the, let me just go into the page, but the, it was the age group as well. I found interesting. Um, uh, 60. So buyers are uh, more likely to be relatively young ma males um, who are well educated with good income. Okay. Um, but 68% of the owners are age 50, uh, age 55 and older. So that was kind of, that was kind of interesting. Um, so older people are actually, uh, 
getting getting uh, getting into it. Um, younger people are slowing down. This is back to 2021, so I mean, obviously, it's going to be a little bit dated, but. Um, Younger people between the ages of 18 and 34 are slowing down in their participation of it, but the age group of 34 to 54 are picking up that slack. So I did find that kind of interesting. So if you have, I know, I know some of the, I know some of the viewers on the channel have, um, uh, have Bitcoin or ETF. I know, especially the, ET, the ETF that, that I have, um, um, yeah. Oh, interesting. Okay. Let's jump onto that. Yeah. Um, I, I hope it's the worst. That's the thing, right? Like just when you think things can't get any worse, they sometimes always they sometimes do. Um, but yeah, Europe is definitely in a completely different situation um, that what we were in, and we're we're fortunate that we live in Canada, um, and we're we're far away from from that. So, but that putting a lot of things into perspective, we we sure we 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 have to. We have to remember that, right? Like we go to bed at night and don't have to worry about our house not being above our head in the morning. So we are, um, we are, uh, we're very fortunate in the country we live in. Yeah. Um, and it's not a great situation over there. I don't know. I hope you hope it's over sooner rather than later, but it doesn't, it, you know, I, I'm not, I, I, I don't, you just, you follow on what's happening and it's just, it's, it's horrible, it's horrible. So, um, uh, it, it's, um, hopefully your, hopefully your relatives are always, you know, are okay. And hopefully you can stay in touch with them a little bit. That's the, that's the main thing too, to make sure they are okay. And hopefully over, everything over there ends faster than sooner rather than later, you know, um, just when it seems to seem like it's going to start, there's always more, more things that happen. I just don't, I just hope it doesn't get worse although it's not to realize what's happened already isn't terrible but i just hope that um it doesn't get worse for everybody yeah um and change the spares uh, welcome welcome to the channel i think it's the first time i'm pretty sure seeing your comment so that's great welcome to the channel if you've been following along i really appreciate it. if you're new that's awesome um yeah every time it, that's my that's my rule of thumb too if if you buy it it goes down <laughs> Um, and, uh, yeah, that's, we've talked, we talk about it a lot. It's almost like investing 101 is just adult. If you have a, if you have an investment that you have a conviction with, it's just dollar cost average, do your small, do your regular deposits to it. Um, what I have been starting to do is when the dividends come through is because of the fractional shares, I just roll those right back into, into purchasing. Uh, I don't actually look at what the price is at the time for the dividend reinvestments. I just, I just do it when it comes through. Um, and it seems to, I mean, I think in the long term, we'll be happy. It's just sticking, sticking with it because you, this is the thing you, you can't time where anything is, and we're not smart enough. I mean, I'm not smart enough to be a trader. I, did, I, know, I know there's day traders here that that do do watch the channel, follow along, that are, you know understand do okay, but that's not that's not me. This slow and steady. I think that's the only play, especially in these times. It gets really, really ugly out there. And I mean, I, I know looking back in like the you know, days of like 20, like late, you know, 2020, 2021, you could literally just buy anything and it would go up. Right. <laughs> so those days are, those days are over. Um, that's for sure. Um, so I think if you can stick it through, um, it's, uh, I think we'll, we'll be rewarded, I hope in the future, you know, in the, in the long, in the long term. I don't think we're going to see, you know, if they, if they rock it up anytime, anytime soon, unless there's a one-off, you know, one-off investment for whatever reason does that, but that's few and far between. So we'll see dollar cost average. There we go. It should change the name of the channel just to dollar cost average, just slow and steady, but great, great comment. Yeah. So you're not alone. You're not alone. Like in terms of, in terms of uh, knowing that uh, if we buy something, the price goes down, but just have to kind of bear it like i said this time uh let's pull up so bitcoin i'll take that one out and these are, and i like to try and find hopefully some always some good news this is kind of both um so this was a survey done by kpmg let me pull this up 
and uh, small businesses are bullish on the future growth despite recession concerns. So uh, this is um, this is Canadian business, small, medium-sized businesses. Um, they're banking on strong growth for the next three years, um, even though uh, economic downturn remains top of mind in the near term. So uh, survey of 500, just over 500 businesses. So 83% are feeling optimistic of, of the growth in the next few years. So uh, that's a good that's a good sign that small businesses is, is still hopefully going to be booming. Right? We all should support small business as much as we can. Uh, there's some great services and businesses out there. So um, definitely encourage you to use that. But what I did find interesting on this, and I don't know if it's, this might relate a little bit to some of the, some of the, uh, that one uh, stock Shopify is, um, they did mention here, 60% um, of the respondents have or expect to pause their digital transformation plans in the next six months in case of an economic downturn. I found that interesting because I, you would think that, I mean, I don't know, I don't run a small business. So it's interesting that they found that they're, they're stopping their digital tra transition, um, or scaling it back, uh, you know, with online, online shopping. So maybe they're just banking on more people going in store and they're, I, I found I did find that interesting. So if you're if you're owning shop, I mean obviously if you own uh, Shopify, you know kind of they build those, you know, stores, online shopping stores like turnkey kind of ideas. So, but it looks like small business. I, maybe I'm I'm gonna assume probably partly as they're cutting back costs, right, the price. So they're looking at things that they can they can they can control a little bit because obviously inflation's hitting businesses as well. So they're cutting back on the, on those kind of things. Um, I don't know if that's necessarily a great idea. I'm, I'm not a huge, like, I'm not a, let me know if, how you, how you shop normally with small businesses. Like I'm not a huge, I'll visit, I'll, I'm more like a thing. I'll, I'll go visit a small business. I think more, cause you kind of, you search out what they, they usually like a lot of them have sometimes unique products, right. That you, you wouldn't necessarily find anywhere else or, or, or it's almost more of a product that you want to, you want to see and touch before you're, you're purchasing. So maybe it's not, maybe not such a bad, bad thing to scale back the online thing. Um, because I, a lot of small businesses, the, the issue with small businesses too, I think it, this is probably the, how the consumers maybe feel about it is the online experience can be hit and miss when you're dealing with a small business. We're so used to, we're spoke, we're so used to Amazon. You know where we log in we order it and it's at our doorstep the same day or the next day a lot of times uh, you rarely have to wait two days for something to come in so uh, I'm, I'm going to assume that just with the logistics of it all small businesses can't necessarily they can't they can't meet those expectations of, of customers so that's probably why they're scaling I would assume they're scaling back as well because if 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 you have, if you're selling a product and it's something that you kind of want to see and look at anyways, it's like, if you're, if you're, someone's ordering it, they have to wait longer, they get it, they're not happy. They have to, then they have to deal with returns and all that kind of stuff. So maybe it is better just to have uh, uh, in-store, you know, kind of in-store shopping or, or, you know, or uh, ordering, but picking up kind of thing instead of, um, instead of online digital. So that's just my my kind of thing on that so we'll see i'm not a big shopify i know i know there's a few people on the channel that that do own shopify and i bought shopify and bought shopify but it's down i was never a big i was never a big uh was never that excited about it and i guess maybe this shows part of the reason with small business uh, i found it I, I looked at it uh i do have like i do have another youtube channel that allows me to sell sell merchandise um I don't sell merchandise on it, but as of course, just to look at things, I always find these interesting. So like, cause Google allowed now or YouTube implemented Shopify stores into their merch, uh, merch ideas. So you could actually have a Shopify store, uh, on your merch section of YouTube. And so I looked, I just looked at it just to check it out. And I found, I found Shopify very confusing and I'm rather, and I'm rather techie. So I couldn't imagine this really a small business having to do it. It's like they would have to hire someone to actually set this up. Because I don't think the rate a regular person. I'm fairly techie. I got frustrated and kind of like, eh, forget. It. I can't be bothered to, fi to finish the setting this stuff up. So, where they go? I don't know. If you have thoughts on 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 Shopify, let me know in the comments. Always always appreciate it. And there we go. Yeah, time in the month. That's that's it. It's like these old 
history repeats, right? History rhymes and history repeats. So hopefully we are, we are, um, uh, we're good by just sticking, sticking it out. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, the, the big thing too, which with, I mean, in terms of like timing markets and trading and everything else, I mean, we're doing the investments in, um, uh, at least the channel is it's just TFSA and I, I'm going to assume a lot of the subscribers and viewers are have a TFSA as well. Right. And you can't, you're not supposed to, you can't not to say you can't, um, but you're not supposed to be basically, you know, trading actively trading a lot in those, um, it's frowned upon by the tax, uh, by the tax man, tax people. Uh, if you are, you're obviously a lot, you know, you can sell, you can sell things, but, uh, and rebalance portfolio and that kind of thing, but you don't want to be definitely trying to, you know, time and trade act very actively in your TFSA by any means. Um, that's what the unregistered accounts are for. If you decide you want to try and time things a bit more, I'm not smart enough to try and time anything as, as, um, change to spare said, um, I, I buy and it goes down. So but that's just how, how it works. Let's, uh, I had one more article to pull up here. Um, and, uh, here we go. You always have to take these, um, you always have to take these, all these articles for, and the, and the, the research for, you know, for what it's worth sometimes, but, um, so surging rents, let's pull this up. Surging rents, surging rents have Canadian con owners rethinking their plans to sell. So, uh, if you are a homeowner or have a income property, some people obviously were thinking, thinking of selling because it obviously, if you, depending on the type of mortgage you have, it's more expensive, right? Um, but now there is markets that people were actually, instead of selling because the prices are down, they're thinking of renting because the rents are up. Uh, where is the, uh, rent in greater Toronto area. This is talk about inflation rent in the greater Toronto area rose 21% on a year over year basis from August. So renting is expensive. So people are deciding now to keep their, keep their place, um, and trying to rent it out, which is, which is interesting instead of, instead of selling because the prices are down. I mean, I know, obviously I don't know how many people here are homeowners, I, I don't own a home. Um, prices are, um, are, were crazy the last couple of years. That's for sure. Um, they seem to be coming down a little bit with rates increasing. So we'll see, I guess people are thinking now they can make money on rent, but yeah, I don't know. It depends on probably how long you, it depends on how long you don't your own that place. You're going to be renting out for sure to make sure it can cash flow. Cause I know there's a lot of people read a lot on, on Twitter and hear a lot of people that bought places. And if you bought, you know, before the rates increased, mortgage payments gone up you have a renter in there you can only rent raise the rent so much a year once you have a lease signed um I'm just, i think some places like i think it's capped in bc if i'm not mistaken at two percent so all of a sudden your your, your payments have gone up like, uh, pretty much exponentially but your rent has stayed the same so you're no longer cash flowing but i guess if you're this is what happens with ten, like with tenants they they'll get if they leave, as soon as they go somewhere else, they're going to, have to pay way more in rent, so they don't leave. And of course, the landlord's bearing that brunt. But that's the risk, I guess. Like any other investment, you have to think about it. You know, people don't. I think that's all a lot of people did. I'm sorry, a lot of people didn't do in Canada. That bought sec, you know second homes to rent out. They didn't think it's always like real estate can only go up. Uh, it doesn't always go up. And Justin, welcome back to the channel. Um, yeah, if you're too active, you'll get taxed. There must be a, obviously, I'm sure Well Simple would come knocking on your, knocking on your door or not your door, but give you a little nudge going, I think you're trading a little too much in your TFSA. You better scale that back. That's what probably what will happen. Um, and they'll make you go move, tell you to go into a, a to a, their regular regular account. I think hopefully most people are smart enough to know that those are the rules. If you're definitely investing in, a, in that, any type of registered account, you should be checking out 
the rules regarding those before you start doing investments that's for sure um i think there's been a few i think i've seen a few times in the news people have like done you could i mean this is the thing you could do really well on a stock and all of a sudden they go you know you have to kind of go where did that what how did you get that they'll go back and look at it and if you've only done a few trades i mean that's fine but if you've done like that thing like every day multiple multiple trades you know um day trading or you know swing trading then you're probably um uh you'll get that uh you'll get that little nudge to uh to stop <laughs> and there we go so rental the basement yeah, see, that's really the only way you can do it. But this this is the hard part. Like, I know with renters, like you get a good rent. Like, there's always horror stories um, um, with 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 tenants. It's like, would you rather have a tenant in the basement? That's a great tenant. They always pay their rent. They're quiet, relatively quiet. They don't complain, you know, and they just everything's everything's perfect. Or all of a sudden they move out and you're like, sweet, I can get I can get more money now. But then you're dealing with a with a nightmare that is late on their rent every month, or you know, always always wants to pay you a few late a few days late, or throwing parties or or what have you. So there's always that cat that catch where they trash they trash the place. I mean, I have I have I have I have friends that have had rental investments properties or property. Um, that the tenant was there for years this is this is going this is going back years this is probably five years ago but the tenant was there for years and years never a problem at all then all of a sudden rent didn't get paid like out of the blue this one month didn't get out of the blue like one month didn't go get paid and then they tried to contact like then they tried to um then they tried to contact the the, the renter nothing nothing so they they lived in a di different city it was close by but they lived in a different city so they weren't answering the phone they weren't they couldn't get a hold of them they got there went to went into the unit it was absolutely thrashed everything was basically left and the person was nowhere to be found and they had rented there for years years and years and years so something happened there ended up being about i think there was around like close to twenty or thirty thousand dollars worth. It was a it was a one bedroom like condo, and there was about twenty to thirty thousand dollars worth of damage and broken, like with appliances and floor. Like it was a nightmare for them. So you never know. Like that's the whole risk. I could never be alone. I would never want to be uh, a landlord. But if you have if you have um, if you've been if you've been lucky, Justin, that's awesome. You know, um, and that's what that's what happens. Like people move because they they. And I think that's what we're seeing, maybe seeing a bit more now as people don't, well, maybe because houses and back, to, we can go back to the previous comment here from, from Adam. Um, yeah, not many, so not many people are buying, but people will still, the thing is people will still have, like, it's not maybe ideal time to buy now. So maybe people will be sitting, sitting in, staying, not sitting in, staying where they are for longer, but things can always happen, right? Like something that you have a new one on the way, uh, a job change where you have to move for, for employment or for school uh, or, you know, maybe maybe there's a, a separation or something like that. Um, and that's what's going to force people always have to move. Unfortunately, sometimes it's not the best time to do it, but that's what happens. Um, but it's but it's interesting. And we I forget if we talked about this on the last live stream a while ago but anyway on, on on housing like do you remember going back when you i remember my grandparents and they always were in the same house they didn't move and it's like it's like now in canada everybody move there's so many people want to just move up move up move up move up all the time you're not kind of we're not we're not really really um, we're not really happy with what it's like we're not really happy with what we have so it's like we want to move to the next place in the nicer you know the nicer part of town with a bigger bigger you know extra when we don't actually when you don't actually need the need the space it's like that's kind of the mentality now whereas like my grandparents came you know pretty much like came to canada worked this is where it's so different like only one would work the other one 
the, the wife stayed at home, which as you think of it now is crazy, but wife stayed at home, husband worked, you know, nine to five job. They bought a house, raised a family, stayed there forever. And that's it. We're now we're like, you know, we're moving every, a lot. It seems like, or you're, you know, you're moving from a condo. You want a bigger place. You have a family you want a bigger one. Like it's just, yeah, it's just interesting how the times have changed for sure. Um, yeah, there was about 30, close to 30, 30, everything was, everything was, was destroyed. The, the appliances were destroyed. The hardwood, like the flooring was all destroyed. There was holes in the drywall. Um, uh, and, and, uh, yeah, it was, it was definitely, it's definitely a disaster zone, but everything, I mean, this is, this is going back probably seven or eight years and it, but of course renovations and, and work and stuff like that is never, is never cheap. Um, I remember when I had, uh, when I was in a townhouse and we had it, we had, uh, there was a flood upstairs or that, so the bathtub leaked down, downstairs. So there was a hole in the, not a hole in the ceiling but in order to fix the bathtub they had to cut a hole in the ceiling there was a bit of water damage in the in the drywall and then get up there to fix it and the repair of just this small hole was like because they had to between the plumbing the ceiling the painting and then the refinishing of it it ended up being like three thousand dollars or something like that it was just crazy the cost so it's not cheap when damage gets done so it's good that justin is good you have, it's good you have good tenants <laughs> and uh oh shark trainer's back well uh, is the market is it is it looking good because you're getting things on on a on a on a deal today i think um, i haven't refreshed let me just see oh see there we go okay we're good <laughs> who 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 bought the uh who bought the uh who bought the the dip this i think i think sharpshooter bought some dip this morning that's so good <laughs> uh there we go so he's right welcome so we have some good news we can we can we can we can be joy we can be um we can be uh a joyful now um there we go uh let me just pull that up one sec here uh if i can get it here Go to trade you here. Let's see what the S and P is doing. Uh, da, da, da. Sorry, one sec here. I got to search for. It. I'm still learning how to use Trading View. Oh, Bitcoin's up though. That's good. Let's pull this up. There it is. One thing that's interesting, let me just share this onto the screen. Um, is the trading, the trading, uh, you can see this is on the let me just get the, the, the chart correctly here this is on the three minute let's just do the one hour sorry 15 minutes and three minutes yeah there we go so it can actually see you can see when it um it kind of kind of gives you the idea this is three minutes so i have to kind of back out because we'll see the the open if we go on the day you can see it dropped at the, let me make sure I'm sharing this properly. Yeah. You can see it dropped at the beginning and then it actually comes, it actually, um, and keep in mind the way it kind of works out is actually tells you there's actually like, like you can pull in the, the bullish flags. So with the drop, with the drop and, uh, coming back up. For what it's worth there we go so it's a good it's a good day again <laughs> i wonder who uh i wonder uh there we go so yeah upwards upwards and onwards so we can forget about all we talked about and it's it's all going it's all great now right <laughs> that's too funny this is this is the thing but this is again let's wait 
let's wait two hours before um, uh, before before one o'clock, and it'll probably be back down again. If you're waking up late, you're in a good mood. If you woke up and check the market first thing, you're like, oh wow, look at that. Um, great question. Uh, I think it's Tavon. I hope, hope I'm pronouncing that right. Welcome to the channel. First comment: How can we fight inflation? I mean, this, this is what they're trying to do. Um, uh, in theory, raising rates will fight fight inflation because you, you will be spending, you'll be saving more, spending less. That's kind of the basic gist of how it all works, with a lot of intricacies in between. That's for sure. Um, but um, should you? But again, should you sell your? I can't speak for you. I I don't think so. But that's me. Uh, don't take my advice always. If you need the money for something maybe but i don't think it's necessarily a good time i don't think it's a good time to, to sell like everybody from, i think everybody that's watching and a few well you've seen my portfolio down right there's no if i if i had to sell i would but i don't have to so it's like and and, and despite you know with what um what sharpshooter said like, if we had panicked this morning and went okay that's it i'm out now today we're up already so it's that's the way the market you just have to you have to almost leave your emotions out of it and go back like we, we were talking with dollar cost averaging tape and um, just dollar cost average what you can afford to do and stick with your plan uh, there's going to be rocky roads in between uh, it just so happens that we're in probably the the worst time in the in the history of, of it or in the last 40 years basically um, and it's it's hard and people are selling, obviously, because we're seeing we're seeing it. But people are also buying, and the, the world also keeps moving. So that's just my two cents. But um, is what's Coke? Uh, what's Coke doing? I, now I have to look. Um, did someone buy? Uh, did someone buy uh, Coke? K O Coca Cola. turn into a chart reading chart reading channel which i didn't want it to be but um there we go someone bought coke did somebody buy coke there we go who was buying coke the other day i think it was you sharp shooter wasn't it i forget who it was now or justin was it justin that bought some coca-cola um he's probably doing okay because it, it was it was a few i should take the three three minute off so we can actually See the day. I forget what day he bought it, but yeah, yeah. This is where this, this is where all the smart people. Um, this is where all the smart people make uh, make some money. Oh, so it was you? Yeah, sharp shooter. Okay, yeah. So there we go. It was you? Good. Hopefully you're making. Hopefully you're up making money today. That's awesome. Good to hear. Yeah, and Candace was talking about. Candace hasn't been here yet today. But she has Coca Cola as well. I was looking at Apple this morning. What's Apple doing? I'm big in the tech. Okay, Apple's up as well. Really? There we go. So, yeah, Candace, we'll see. She, she's, she, Candace, Candace, I think everybody that's Probably watching knows Candace's channel. If you're not, check out Mountain Finance. She's she's a smart cookie. Um, she's been doing the day trade thing, and I'm hoping she gets more into. She's going to be getting more into explain explaining how, what she does and how it works. It's great because she's not like a. You see a lot of the people on on YouTube, and you watch videos, and it's like it's too it's too it's too like clickbaity and all is great and everything else. She's got a really level head. Um, I think I think I, I kind of tried to do try to as well, uh, but she's, so she's got a really um, level head about things, really methodical, really researched. Um, so she's got a great channel, and hopefully she does more on the day trade stuff. So we kind of not that I get into it, not that it scares me. I just I, you have to really spend the time. I, I can't say I necessarily have the time to uh, be able to to properly do it, but it might be fun. It'd be fun to kind of do something one day. Take a look, like, like I always call it kind of like the gam, the gambling money, like 
much with my CLO purchase, right? It's like take a couple hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, and know you're going to not have it, and to see might be kind of fun. And is Meta up? Yeah, Meta was not doing well. All the all the risk and like all lot of the tech is was down was down big time. Um, Billy, you're welcome, welcome back. Uh, also, like Nvidia was down, Google, like everything. So who knows? Yeah, this is good. We started off we started off in like a in like a dour discussion this morning but let's just wait till tomorrow or wait till wait till 12 30 before we, we start celebrating before the end of the day so it's good it just goes to show like don't make any any like wait don't wake up and make any rash decisions um just can go back to your question um uh Tavon, and i hope i'm pronouncing that right let me know um you don't want to wake up and if you're if you're if you're waking if you're if you're investing in, and waking up and your heart sinking when something's down like that you're probably investing too much into something that's my that's my opinion if if you wake up and you're like oh okay well maybe i'll get more or it's okay not not if, if it's if it's keeping you awake or you're having that that feeling you should probably not have it much uh, into investment for sure big thing being like even for like cryptocurrency and bitcoin because there's can be huge like huge swings uh, on it and it's very volatile um you can definitely you know if you're invested in that you've you've um if you've seen it um you know what it uh you know that it uh can be can be ugly but it's basically if we go back to Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin's basically where it was um, back, uh, which is great. And I did my, that reminds me, I did my, uh, I did my shake. Don't forget to do your shakes. Uh, it's coming up on nine o'clock. And I always like to do my, my Bitcoin shake as I remember. There we go. Uh, 308 day uh, shake streak, which is nice. And then I do my what I do is I do my shake, and then I do I'll do a I do a recurring uh, purchase on shake pay as well. And then at the end of the week, I'll just transfer it out into my uh, transfer off the exchange. So there we go. We've got, I think we're on a record here for people watching. So 11 people really appreciate it. Uh, if you haven't said hi, say hey. It's always nice. Or if you just want to alert, that's okay too. But I do really appreciate it. If you aren't going to necessarily um, leave a comment, uh, go ahead and leave a like. Hit the like on the uh, on this stream. It would really help out the channel. The channel's been doing great. Uh, we can talk uh, about good news today because the market is doing okay today uh, all of a sudden. Um, and the channel is too so i really you know we're coming up to the end of the hour like to, we do like to go on for an hour in the morning uh, hopefully you're enjoying it we get some we get the regulars which are coming in which is awesome but also some new um some new viewers every time which is great uh that they're they're coming along so definitely really appreciate it uh let me know in the comments too since we're since um since the market's kind of rallied a little bit here from from this morning um Aldrin, did anybody buy anything first thing in the morning because they saw the what the market was doing? I'd be interested to see with that. Um, we're planning on um, my payday is not not till next week, so I couldn't unfortunately because um, I was I've been looking at picking up some more uh, Brookfield renewables. It's going to be my next my next purchase, um, but uh, I haven't yet. It's days like today, you wish you had some extra savings, but such as such as life sometimes uh on there so um and then sharpshooters let's just pull getting caught up with these past comments here btc y is down 12 cents so is it is it still down it oh yeah it's down 12 cents yeah it comes back it, it kind of it almost kind of what i find with these ones is they they do lag a little bit the price of bitcoin when it when it fluctuates, it's just, just for whatever reason. Um, so if you would have got it, yeah. So it's come back almost to where it was. Uh, yeah, it would have been good, maybe. 
I mean, the dividends on those are great if you can handle the volatility. And I think, I think with ETCY, we'll see some, we'll get, we'll get growth eventually. This is going to be a long time, but if it's, if you're holding them for five to 10 years, I think we'll be, I think we'll be, I hope, <laughs> I, I think we'll be okay. I think we'll be okay. So the euro is the euro back to par? Oh, sorry, I'm thinking the uh, I'm thinking the uh, British pound. My one, I don't have the euro. Hold up, the one is on the one with the U.S. dollar being so strong. About I don't know if you're watching the other videos on the channel, but my the venture fund update is just sitting in the U.S. cash fund right now. And that's like the only thing that's doing good. <laughs> that's the only that's the only the only investment because it's all sitting in the U.S. dollars. It's actually doing okay. So I'm happy about that so far. Let's let that one ride. I'll have to do another update for that. I did do an update because there was a dividend received, but the dividends got reinvested. So I'll do another update on the channel so, so people can can see that one. I'm just updating as it as something kind of happens. Yeah, but happy so far. I'm okay with that. With the strong, the strong dollar. Um yeah. So sharp uh sharpshooter if you're still watching, did you buy ECCY today? what people are doing and i'll have to see if kansas watches the replay and if she'll mention if she bought some uh, when she bought coke what she's done with it she might have traded it already we'll see so that's all right uh let's see here uh, I always like to let end on end on good news, but I think with the with the market rebounding there too, it's um it's a good uh, a good sign. I guess people a lot of people are like um, a lot of people are waiting. I think waiting with cash and they're scared. Don't know. Uh, so yeah, there you go. Waiting and watching. Everybody's just waiting and watching. But if you can put your money in a savings account too and cash and make because of rates, I mean if rates are higher, we're saving put it in your savings account. <laughs> can make a decent a decent thing um i should do it i should really do a video on savings account if there's interest let me know um because i'm not a big one to chase savings accounts around but i know a lot of people do and i should do a video on where some of the you know some where the, some of the good bonus bonus stuff is i find i don't because the, the, the difference sometimes is it worth your time and uh, and i know with a lot of a lot of on like a lot of the online banking places and stuff like that if you ever need to access it it's it's not that you can't access it but it's it just takes takes longer you see you have to transfer it from one to the you know possibly like for example i mean one main one is is tangerine although tangerine does have their checking account now but i don't really i don't usually use them. i have a tangerine um uh, credit card so i have accounts there uh because it's a cashback card but the savings account i don't use because i can get same interest somewhere else but they sometimes they do those bonus things but it's like it's, you transfer it and then you have to if you need it you got to transfer like just to manage all these accounts it just doesn't seem doesn't seem worthwhile to me maybe i'm wrong um red days excite me green days scare me yeah that makes sense um, if you're in the building stage, yeah. So yeah, that's, that's, I think a good way. Um, I think that's a good way to look at it. Um, I typically don't buy on a green day, but partly that's because every day has been red. <laughs> like most days that I've been able to have been, have been red, but if something is down and I've been waiting, yeah, I'll get it on a red day as opposed to green. I try to, yeah. Good man. That's a good way. To, good way to think of it. And if you're in the building stage, I think y'all. I mean, I think everybody that's watching is in, in the building stage. I think you're always in the building stage. You would think. I mean, I'm not. Cool. I'm probably. I don't know when everybody's plan planning as retiring or whatever. But I mean, I'm still twenty years away at least. So I think we'll be building for a while. So this 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 you know you can go back to this in ten years. The stream and go. It's just a blip in the in the big picture, right? So, um, EQ, yeah. So for savings, EQ Bank is good. Um, they're all kind of sitting around, I think a 2% interest mark about now, or, or it's like a promo, 
promo amount or to 2.25. I know Well Simple's 1.5 for their um, savings. I'm going to assume it's probably going to go up a little bit eventually. They're always they're quick to take you know they're quick to take extra interest when you're you know but they're slow to give it. It always it always seems but that's the way that's the way it is. So two percent. But if you're see this is the thing. I, I mean if you're if you're making two percent somewhere, if you are there's no point in switching it somewhere else to make you know two point two for three months or something like I, I just don't see those. I don't see the the necessary benefit of that. You're probably better off. Instead of moving it around a lot is maybe finding a I don't know, 90 day GIC or a one year GIC and locking it in somewhere. That's that's a bit going to pay you, make it a bit more worthwhile. But that's just me. Some people are on top of it and transfer, transferring stuff around all the time. I don't, it's easier just to have it in one place. I find, you know, one or two, one or two financial institutions. So, you know, kind of know you kind of remember where it is i guess too but there we go so we're coming up at uh, nine o'clock before we end this thanks everybody for joining in we had the record number of people watching so if you are uh all the regulars thanks again the new people thank you uh, i did post just a recap i did post an update to my portfolio uh, on the channel yesterday so you can go in and check that out now if you want to see how it was doing that was filmed as of yesterday after mark's close so we're probably up a little bit now i'll have to check when we get off the stream see how things are going uh, uh and then what we'll plan to do it's thursday already this week goes like once you get through the holiday and the week just goes goes crazy and it's like almost so tomorrow's friday we'll do another stream i think people i think we like it i like jumping on here for the first hour of the day to get kind of gives me a chance to you know again drink coffee and uh and have a chat with everybody see how see how things are going and just read a bit of news learn a little bit it's always it's always fun i think with the coffee thing um i love my coffee and i know with with the channel with the channel not quite monetized we need more watch hours it's the big thing on the channel but we have a thousand subscribers but part of the thing with when you do get monetized is this is what i'll do is you can have memberships and we'll do a kind of silly thing we'll do like a i think we'll do a, we'll, we're going to tie it in with coffee somehow we got to figure that out but we'll definitely do a, a coffee coffee themed uh membership for for people what maybe do some fun some fun things with that too as well so that we're it. We got two minutes left. So if there's any last minute, if there's any last minute questions, do let me know or last minute comments. Always appreciate it too. I do appreciate everybody that takes their time out of the morning to to join me. Hopefully it's a good start to your day. It's always kind of fun to uh, to jump on and see how people are doing. And it's especially nice when it is it is green out there. So hopefully this will continue for today. Uh, hopefully some people had a chance to maybe do a little purchase as the market was down if they had a feeling about something that they were wanting to pick up from yesterday um that's great it's always nice to hear people that are doing that are doing well because i know a lot of people with their portfolios aren't uh i can speak for myself and i i see from other people's comments on some of the videos that they're they're down as well so stick with it that's my suggestion um don't invest anything you can't afford to lose as always um don't um Make sure you have, you know, some money left over on the side for an emergency fund that uh, isn't uh, in anything that uh, is volatile, especially if you're in some of the some of the stocks that we do talk about on the channel. Um, the crypto and the, a lot of the growth stocks can be very, as you see, can be very volatile there. So ha have some savings and um, uh, as a suggestion is maybe check out some of those high interest savings if you need to put a little bit of uh, some money to squirrel it away uh, for something. So thanks for watching, everybody. That was great. That was a good hour. And we will catch you in the next live stream. I really appreciate it. Take care, everybody. Thanks so much.